everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. Last week we got some of our high voltage issues sorted out. This week we're going to pick back up where we left off with the trunk. Let's see how far we can get. Okay, so I took some people's advice for the uh, trunk here. Um, I guess we'll see how it works. So again, if you remember where we left off, um, I had some hinge points, but they were kind of towards the center. And so everything was able to work and lift up fine, but uh, it was a little bit wobbly. So what I did is I actually went and got some kind of these linkages. So this one comes off of a Mazda 3. Uh, this was suggested by one of yours. Again, the thought here is uh, this kind of gives it a different um, way to open. Rather than just a straight hinge, it kind of almost comes up and I don't know, the back almost comes up and when it flips open. So I'm gonna see if this sort of mechanism will work for my application. I think that I got a set for I think 12 or 13 bucks. Okay, so I use a screwdriver just to pry that uh, kind of retaining clip and then this one comes off. I just wanted that so I can kind of get the, uh, we'll call it the motion. So again, this is kind of when things are down. So this one I believe bolts to the uh, body and then this one would bolt to the uh, trunk lid here. So what I just need to find out is if this range of motion will work for my application. And so what I'm looking at here is when I first start, so any movement, again, my, my trouble is that farthest most point there. So it really can't move that way until it's up. So again, the first movement is up and then it starts to kind of tilt this up. So this has got, uh, again, a gas strut attached. Um, my trunk lid may, may be heavier than, again, the Mazda 3. Again, it's just got a lot more area than uh, some of those little trunks. I may still keep my old gas springs to help lift. I am running into some space problems already. So again, I think ideally I'd want these to kind of be, say right here, kind of at the edge. But I think, I've got, uh, there's these diagonal braces um, from the frame that kind of cut right across here. So I just don't know that they're gonna fit. So again, I've got these uh, braces that come. So again, I think I would like to mount it kind of right, right about there. So yeah, I don't know what we'll do. Um, we'll see if this works or if we just go back to uh, the other style hinges all right, I am under the shell here, under the trunk lid as well. And one of the challenges I'm going to have to deal with if I end up trying to go this route with this guy, um, the trunk kind of angles back at each side. So again, these ones we want to be straight. So um, I'm going to put it here in the corner but how it angles back, I'm, so I'm gonna have to kind of try and finesse it in just so it fits. And then um, I believe there may be just enough room because there's a little bit of room between this and the frame, um, enough that I could put a little, um, you know, the L stock, the, the steel that's uh, L shaped. There's enough that that can fit under. So I'm thinking that's probably enough that I can kind of fit this guy in, um, you know, so kind of like like that and then have this these ones here bolt to that L stock um, but that's wishful thinking uh, in the past I've always just kind of had to always ran into some real estate problems so I'll see I'll see how we can do this does anyone know if there's a prize for putting the shell on and off 30 times okay maybe it's 40 times but still Want to know, is there a prize? Okay, we're gonna put that shell on again. So we just need to confirm the correct, you know, the exact placement we want those, uh, I guess we're calling them hinges, right? The trunk hinges. So gonna put the shell on, just make sure we got the exact right place and then we'll start fabricating. All right, the shell is on again. So we'll kind of see exactly where, where they need to be and see if we can make some brackets to put things in place. Okay, so I'm looking towards the back of the car, um, putting the hinge in. I don't know if you can see it right here, but I'll sneak the camera in. So 
see there's I think there's just barely enough room so I think it'll work um, I'll just have to see how to mount mount it to the deck lid here and how to do it to the frame but I do think there's enough room all right I'm getting ready to mount these um, one thing I'm learning though is you know so this surface is flat this surface is flat but they're not 90 degrees to each other so like I don't know if you can tell but this one's like kicked in so um, just when I go to mount to the car I'll have to see what I want to do to compensate all right I've been doing a couple trial and error things um, I'd love to put these like all the way at the corner um, but they're gonna have to go in about right here I still think that'll probably be wide enough to give it some good stability but um, it's got to go about right here because I'll show you on the trunk lid you know, I guess I could do a lot of reprofiling but essentially you know you can either do right here at the edge or it's got to go inboard about right here so because you just got some high spots here so I could like grind this all down and fill it in or something but I'll probably just put it right here. Um, the edge, we, we, I looked at it, but uh, it just doesn't have enough. It wants to kind of toe in. If you want it straight, it kind of starts running into the rail. So edge kind of doesn't work, again, unless you kind of start um, profiling this off. So I think I'll just put it in. What is that, maybe like six inches? All right, so these guys, um, the mounting surfaces are not exactly uh, 90 degrees. So basically, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of tilted here. So if this one's flat, that one's kind of at an angle. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, some of that 90 degree steel. I'll probably just kind of weld it between here and here. And instead of just kind of having it be like right 90 degrees, I'll have it be just skewed so it'll mount, so it'll mount uh, to these guys just right. So um, I do have some news on the welding front. So the welder that I had been using for about a year and a half was borrowed and so the uh, the people they weren't really using it but they uh, decided to go ahead and sell it so I no longer have access to that so let me show you something so I got a Weld Pro multifunction welder it's a uh, I don't know I feel like it's surprisingly lightweight um, I got a box full of goodies there All right, so this is one of the things I was actually interested in. Um, so this one will actually allow me to run off just 110. Um, obviously you can't do a lot of power with this, but uh, I think for the welding I do, that'll be fine. Looks like they got a couple different styles of ground clamp. like serious springs. Yes. I think that's a couple other TIG nozzles. So I'm thinking this is the uh, feeder for inside. I don't know if these are spares or if I need to do some assembly. These look like they're different nozzles from the MIG welder here. Okay, I was going to say, I thought I was missing this, but this should hopefully be the gauge. So I will take it to the garage and see if we can get all set up. Okay, I've got my uh, new welder all set up. So um, put my wire spool on. This, you can, it's got like an adapter for like 10 pound spool. I just use like the two pound spool. Um, swapped out the, uh, for the correct groove of the wire I'm using. And then um, the other things, uh, again, same, same thing here. Swapped out the tip for the correct wire size. Um, got all my 
connector is going in the right place. And I'm interested to do this one where I've got the uh, adapter for the house voltage, the 110 gas meter. So I think I'm good to go. I'm just kind of reading because the one I've used before is just a MIG welder and this is a multi-function. So I'm going to figure this out and I'll do a couple uh, runs on a test piece. Got things set up. It was really quite easy. Um, with 110, this is about as much as I can do, which is fine. Um, I just did a couple passes here. And again, the default settings work really well and again, really easy to change. And so I think I'll like it. Next step is to uh, weld on the car. Okay, I've got things kind of hot glued in place. Make sure things are both square and that this is at the right angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld. I welded in the other piece here. So just kind of tack welded on top, both places. So for whatever reason this doesn't work out, I can easily kind of grind it off, start again. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bolt uh, both these up. So again, I've got some holes drilled and uh, I'll set the top on, the uh, trunk lid, and I'll kind of use a marker and kind of mark in those holes exactly where I need to put uh, fastener locations in the hood. And then we can try it. I put on the uh, hinges, put the trunk lid on, just drew with some marker kind of where those holes were. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and drill those holes. All right, so I've got the uh, hinges uh, secured. So I'm gonna see if we can lift up the trunk lid now. Okay, so that one didn't quite work either. Um, this car was just not, not made to do this. So I think what's going on is, uh, I think it maybe would have worked if those hinges could have been further forward. But again, with those uh, struts, those braces, they couldn't go any further forward. Um, and so we're having the same problem we had with the hinges when we had the hinges kind of close to the corner that when it lifts up, this front part really wants to nosedive. So, um, I think what I'll do at this point is I'll go ahead and kind of trim the uh, shell part so it can kind of go down because I think I just I don't see any other way to do it because um, if I want the hinges kind of on the outside either either way where I just have kind of the straight hinge or these kind of uh, linkages it just won't allow for this configuration so I'll probably have to reprofile this uh, Oh, that little nose piece that uh, sticks down. All right, so um, I cut out just the uh, shell portion there. So when it goes up, that nose can, you know, has access to kind of dip down. So I'll kind of show you what that looks like. So there you have it. Um, I will probably put some of the gas springs on, make sure that it kind of opens to the distance I want. And if it, if uh, the little gas springs for the uh, hinges are enough or if I need to put the other ones on. So I'll do some of that. I will also mention that it is very stable. So it, it doesn't really have uh, any kind of rock side to side or anything. Um, I do need to kind of fasten these bolts a little bit more and do a full weld on these, but essentially it feels very stable. All right, put a quick coat of paint on. 
touched up a few places, so we'll let that uh, kind of dry up. Okay, for the wing, it's got um, wires coming out the side here, and that's for this. Um, what I really need to do is I need them to come out here, and so I'll need to drill a hole here and then also in the trunk lid. So I'll kind of fish the wires back in here and then out here. Um, the other thing I want to do is um, for kind of a rear view, I want to kind of mount, I think, right under the light here. And so again, I'll have one extra cable that I'll kind of poke a hole here and have go out through that one as well. So I got things fished through. Um, these are for the uh, third light here. So this one goes back here. And then this is for the backup camera. Um, the way I did it is I used um, some solder, some kind of thicker solder, and just kind of went through one hole, grabbed it in the other, and then kind of fished the wires through. Okay, so I just checked my third brake light once more just to make sure it's working. We're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and essentially seal it up with some of this, uh, with some of this automotive sealant. Okay, I made a quick list. Again, my goal is to get this thing registered. I know a lot of people are anxious for paint and things like that, but uh, in order to get it registered, I need to get the headlights in. Um, and again, when I put the headlight, uh, those little things that retain the headlight in, I can't get them back out. So I wanna get the headlight call it housings kind of painted before I put the headlights in. Gotta get the windshield on. I'm gonna put the door panels on. I wanna get the carpeting in. I need the dash paneling. I call it an iPad holder. Um, I know I want the iPad, I just need something to hold it in place. Um, I need to add some lights. Um, and then the trunk where I've kind of cut off, I need to fiberglass that. So um, that I think is what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna kind of cut that off, fiberglass things, and uh, that's probably gonna do it for this week. But uh, we're getting close, getting close. To make the uh, rain gutter here, I'm gonna take the piece that I cut out and just kind of cut out sections that are the straight sections and kind of put them in place, maybe hot glue them or something. And then I'll kind of come back with some fiberglass to kind of uh, shore things up. I think what that means though is I'm going to take the shell off so I can kind of do this upside down. Shell is off again. Is that like 31 or 41 times? Anyway, so the purpose is uh, again to get the rain gutter kind of mounted and I think it'll be easier to kind of lay fiberglass from this side and then make the top side look smooth. So that's what we'll do. I got this uh, kind of fiberglass in place. I put a uh, kind of a paint stick underneath, kind of taped it in place. Put all the uh, cut up pieces of that rain gutter. Um, I will have to kind of uh, fill maybe with a short strand fiberglass filler and then also some filler um, on the other side. But uh, had a sheet kind of over the top, had lots of pieces kind of over there. I put a jack and a flat piece underneath of just like some polyethylene that should release really easy. So we'll let this set up and kind of see how it turned out. All right, one of the potential advantages of taking the shell on and off so many times is we stress it a lot, you know, kind of picking it up, bending it, twisting it, flipping it over, and uh, found a couple cracks. Um, again, these are kind of on the joints that I made. So kind of uh, widen the cracks and I'll fill it in with uh, probably some short strand fiberglass filler. OK, 
Okay, I put the uh, short strand fiberglass filler in a couple places I had cracks that I had kind of enlarged. Um, I also kind of climbed underneath and put it under there just in between the seams. So I'll let that cure up and kind of start uh, sanding and making smooth. All right, I just sanded it pretty smooth. Um, still got a couple little spots that need some filler. So I'm gonna fill it real quick and maybe touch it up. I'm also thinking um, potentially while it's upside down here, for the panels that, uh, I'll call it the interior panels or the inside of panels, I'm wanting to kind of paint them black rather than kind of leave, leave it uh, kind of the fiberglass color. So I might do that today as well. All right, so we kind of shaved this off. I tried to kind of keep a similar line all the way across. Um, one thing that might give me a little trouble, I'm not sure. So this element here fits into the rain gutter somewhat. And so it had a rain gutter here and then it kind of came out. I guess it should still fix. I think this was there before. Anyway, I made the new rain gutter kind of go that way. So I'm just wondering if this little high spot's gonna be a problem or not. So may have to flip the shell over and see if that's going to be an issue. All right, got the inside painted. This is the black rubberized undercoating. So my thought here is um, any little rock rock things that come up, it should just kind of bounce off, not chipping things. Also, I'm hoping that it might give a little bit of a kind of a sound reduction. Anyways, I'll take off the tape. Um, if I need to, I'll kind of wipe down any overspray. I'll show you how it looks. All right, took the tape off, cleaned up a, just a overspray in a few areas. It looks pretty good. Okay, I brought it back in the garage, flipped it over. Again, looks really sharp, I think. Um, we did a pretty good job taping. Again, just a few places of overspray. Now uh, what I'm looking at is this guy. So where we did the fiberglass, we cut it there. So now what I'm gonna do is kind of clean that up and then uh, start to fill. Okay, so I was able to kind of get this uh, filled in and somewhat smooth. And the, uh, I'll call it the rain gutter, it's there. And uh, so again, um, I think with paint and such, this, this will kind of look like it was designed this way. Um, I'd like to put it on the car, but we are running out of time. All right, everybody, that does it for this week. See you next week.